Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for March 2021, brought to you on behalf of Credit Union SA. Momentum continued to build across Australian housing markets last month as values rise at the fastest rate in 17 years. Our national index showed housing values surged 2.1% higher in February. That was the largest month-on-month -month rise since August 2003. Spurred on by a combination of record low mortgage rates, improving economic conditions, government incentives and low advertised supply levels, Australia's housing market is in the midst of a broad-based boom. Housing values are rising across each of the capital cities and rest of state regions, demonstrating the diverse nature of this housing upswing. A synchronised growth phase like this hasn't happened in Australia for more than a decade. The last time we saw a sustained period where every capital city and rest of state region was rising in value was mid-2009 through to early 2010 as post-global financial crisis stimulus fueled by a demand. Sydney and Melbourne were among the strongest performing markets, recording a 2.5% and 2.1% lift in home values respectively over the month as Australia's two largest cities caught up from a weaker performance through 2020. The quarterly trend, however, is still favouring the smaller cities. Darwin housing values rose by 5.5% over the past three months, Hobart values rose by 4.8% and Perth was up 4.2%. Whether this newfound growth in Sydney and Melbourne can be sustained is unclear. Both cities are still recording values below their earlier peaks. However, at this current rate of appreciation, it won't be long before Australia's two most expensive capital city markets are moving through new record highs. With household incomes expected to remain subdued and stimulus winding down, it's likely affordability will once again become a challenge in these cities. Regional markets have continued to show a higher rate of capital gain relative to the capital cities. However, the performance gap has narrowed compared with the earlier phase of the growth cycle. Regional areas generally recorded less of a decline in housing values through the worst of the COVID period last year, while also showing an earlier and stronger growth trend through the second half of last year. This regional preference is reflected in the annual growth trend where the combined regionals index is 9.4% higher while the combined capital cities index is up a much smaller 2.6%. A housing market trend that has persisted through the COVID period to date is the weaker performance of unit markets relative to detached housing. Across CoreLogic's combined capitals index, house values have recorded a growth rate more than three times higher than that of units. There are some tentative signs that the trend could become less obvious, with Sydney unit values recording their first month of growth since April last year, and Melbourne unit values recording their largest gain since late 2019. One of the factors driving housing prices higher is low advertised supply levels. CoreLogic's most recent measure of total listing numbers continues to see advertised supply significantly below that of recent years. The number of properties advertised for sale nationally remained 25.3% below 2020 levels over the 28 days ending February 28th. Whilst available supply remains at historically low levels, the quarterly number of home sales is estimated to be up 35.3% on 2020 levels, with regional dwelling sales 40.6% higher compared with a 32% lift in capital city sales. Housing inventory is around record lows for this time of the year and buyer demand is well above average. These conditions favour sellers and buyers are likely confronting a sense of FOMO which could limit their ability to negotiate. Vendor discounting rates were estimated at a record low of 2.6% in February and auction clearance rates have been consistently up in the high 70% to low 80% range which is well above average. The pace of capital gains has eased off a bit across Adelaide. After the monthly growth rate reached 1.3% in November last year, conditions have eased back to a monthly gain of 0.8% in February. Houses have been leading the growth trend, rising in value by 3.1% over the past three months, while unit values have recorded a lower 0.8% lift. Both house and unit values were at record highs in February. Across the sub-regions of Adelaide, the outer southern region of Onkaparinga has recorded the highest capital gains, up 10.8% over the past 12 months, while at the other end of the spectrum, Adelaide City is the only sub-region to record a decline over the past year, with values down 1.2%. Our estimate of sales activity over the past three months is tracking 19% higher than a year ago, but listing numbers are down 32% on last year. 
With demand high and supply low, we're expecting the market will continue to favour sellers over buyers, with further upwards pressure on housing prices. Overall, Australia's housing market is now well entrenched in one of the strongest growth phases on record. For housing values and activity to be surging during a global pandemic seems counterintuitive, however the factors driving this growth are significant and diverse. Record low mortgage rates look set to remain in place for a prolonged period of time, providing confidence to buyers and historically low interest payment to income ratios. Economic conditions are consistently beating forecasts, with the RBA acknowledging Australia's economy is likely to recover 6 to 12 months earlier than originally expected. The economic recovery is feeding into a solid rebound in consumer sentiment and encouraging households to reduce their savings buffer and spend more. Advertised supply remains around record low levels at a time when buyer demand is rising swiftly to above average levels. This mismatch between demand and supply looks set to remain a feature of the housing market for some time. There are some headwinds ahead in the form of a reduction in fiscal support from the federal government, home loan deferral arrangements expiring and migration remaining stalled. The intensity of these headwinds has lessened over recent months though. The economy navigated the earlier fiscal cliff relatively seamlessly, however, the wind-up of JobKeeper and the COVID supplement for JobSeeker is likely to cause a temporary slowdown in the economic recovery, which could slow some of the housing market exuberance. Similarly, there's been a substantial drop in deferred home loans, down from $195 billion, or 11% of all home loans in May last year, to $32 billion, or 1.8% of all mortgages at the end of January. As the deferral program expires at the end of March, we could progressively see a rise in forced sales across some sectors of the housing market. Housing price momentum looks to be skewed towards the upside, with the tailwinds of low rates, improving economic conditions and consumer confidence, low supply and high consumer demand likely to outweigh the headwinds associated with the coming wind-down of fiscal support. No doubt the coming months will provide more clarity on how Australia's economy and housing markets navigate the wind back of government support. You can keep up to date with all the housing-centric news at www.corelogic.com.au.